Hey guys, Jeff here from Home Renovation and winter is coming. Bum, bum, bum. Listen, we're gonna go through a whole pile of information today about things you gotta do to winterize your house. Now, depending on your house, um, this can be different for everybody. So we're gonna cover a lot of bases for new construction and for all of you out there who are renovating your old houses like I am, there's tips and tricks that you can use while you're in the midst of your renovations, okay? So that you can reduce the amount of air drafts that you have and lower your energy costs in the winter time. So we're gonna go through a bunch of tips. Hopefully some of this information will be valuable for you. And we're just gonna dive right in because we don't wanna waste your precious time. Number one is door sweepers, right? We've gotta get our doors sealed up. Now, generally doors and windows have very low R ratings, okay? And it's because they're thin. They're just, there's not much you can do to insulate them. So even though it's an insulated door in a lot of cases, they have glass or windows, they're R5 right? But the air leaks around the doors, that's where you're running into trouble. And if you've got air leaks, you've got drafts and drafts make you feel cold. And when you feel cold, you turn up the heat. So if you can get rid of the drafts in your house, you can leave the temperature down and save a ton of money, right? So this is really simple. It's just a U channel. It clips underneath the door. You slide it in. This is on the inside of the door because doors always open in on the outside of a house in most cases, right? And then you just set the height where it sits nice and snug and you can screw it in, okay? It's all vinyl. You just take a pair of snips so you can cut it to length. No matter what size your door, you'll have to cut it to length. This is 36 and a half inches long and I picked it up at the local Home Depot. Comes in a couple of different colors and it has a couple of different runs of different fins here, okay? And so if your door is too close to the bottom, you're gonna rub these things right off and they become useless, right? You might find it necessary to make a minor adjustment to your door if you have an old wooden one. But if you have a brand or a relatively new door that was bought in the frame in the jam, then this will work fine for you if the old one falls off. Now, likewise for doors, here's another option, okay? Now, this door sweep will only cover gaps underneath your door up to three quarters of an inch. Like I said, that's standard, shouldn't be an issue. But if you have, an old door or a wooden door or somebody put a commercial door on your residence. I've seen that before. You can buy one of these. This one goes up to inch and a half almost. I would call it inch and a quarter. But this is just the same thing. It screws on the bottom of the door and it has a nice thick piece of rubber here that goes much lower and it'll close up the air gap. The idea is to get rid of the draft and that will work, okay? As I'm making this video, we're gonna just clip we're gonna just dive into the actual installation, show you a couple of tips and tricks on each part, okay? So let's go and I'll show you how this works. If your door gasket is coming off, and you'll see they come installed from the factory, they just got these little fins in the bottom, right? They just snap into place. If yours is destroyed, okay, you can just rip that off the bottom and then install one of these. It's relatively easy to take care of. <clears throat> All right, we don't need that. We can go with this instead. Now, <clears throat> All right, now let's cut the right length now. So, now, yeah, I'm just gonna make a mark. There we go. And we're gonna cut. Nice and easy, eh? All you're gonna need is a drill of some sort so that you can screw this in. So we close the door and then you make sure you got positive contact, okay? By sliding the edge down. And then we screw it on. Piece of cake. And if the gap is too big, like I mentioned this one, this one can then be installed and it can close the gap all the way down to your trim, all right? Because this one stops here, but this one would go all the way to the trim. So, either way, they both work the same. You can cut, this is an aluminum, so you can use your chop saw if you have to cut it down, all right? Or a hacksaw, but I prefer to make a nice clean cut. And if you're gonna cut these materials, always cut the hinge side, so the factory edge is what everybody else is seeing. Little tip. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Also around your door, you're gonna have these gaskets, okay? And you just shove them in. I know, if you have a worn gasket or it's been chewed up from moving furniture 
or whatever else have you. You can go to the local store. They're just a couple of bucks each. You cut it to fit and you stick them in. And let's go show you how to do that right now. All right, so here's how you replace your door gasket. You just grab it and pull it straight out, okay? That's what it looks like. And when you want to go put the next one in, you just cut it to measure and you start right in the corner, nice and flat. And you just push it in. Mm -hmm. And now it's getting stuck there. There we go. Done. Piece of cake. So these are easy to replace. And here's another trick for you. You might never have thought about this, but if you're going to go paint your door, take the gaskets out. And when you close the door, you can put your deadbolt engaged and it leaves the thickness of this gasket as a ga gap all around the door. So your paint can dry without getting attached to the frame. And you can go to sleep while it's drying overnight because you're probably going to want to use an oil base, which takes 12 hours, right? Just, just saying, while we're talking about gaskets. Great painting tip there. I'm sure that'll help somebody out. The last thing you're going to need for your doors is corner seals. Now, if you buy a new door, generally they come with the door uh, in a little plastic bag, and a lot of people don't know what to do with these things, okay? They come with a two-sided tape on it, and this gets installed at the base of the door, okay? I know. Really? It's really tricky. And there's one for each side of the door. We'll stick those on right now and show you how it's done. So here's our little end pieces here. One of the weakest parts of the whole door assembly for insulation is right down here. Okay, you want to close that gasket and stick that in and it'll seal right to the side of the jam. And do it on both sides. That's it for doors. Pretty simple, right? If you've got good seals and good gaskets and your lock hardware works, right? Maybe I have to throw an extra screw in there. Make sure everything's closing snug so there isn't any air coming through. You can easily adjust your latch plate and close the door a little bit tighter if you need to. Or you can add one of these if you have to, all right? Now, this is just a sponge with two-sided tape on it. And this is for windows and doors, which is why we're gonna show this we're transitioning from one material to the next now, right? Piece of cake. And you can just take this stuff and eh, put it on your edge of your window, close your window. If your old wooden windows, this is really handy, okay? Or if your doors don't have a very good seal or they have unique door jam framing systems from the 1930s, then this is also very handy. You just take this extra tape off and it's only adhesive on one side, all right? So be careful with that. But this is a great little gizmo and you can use this for sealing up just about any door or window out there. Now, when dealing with windows and you're dealing with drafts, you're dealing with two things. One is air moving through the window because they have an operation, okay? So they open or close, they got a crank and wind is actually blowing through the window. If that's you and it's an older house, a lot of times you can solve that problem. You go to the hardware store, they're gonna sell you the, uh, the plastic kits, right? You put the two-sided tape on your window casing, you put your plastic over top and you just heat up with a hair dryer. That'll stop that air leak. But if your windows are old, you're gonna need to take the window trim off first, all right? And use the foam gun, okay? Using a foam gun like this, and we've demonstrated this product before, I'll uh, throw a link up here about expansion foam and you can see how this operates. But if you take off your window casings and foam around the windows, all right, because chances are if it's an older window, it hasn't seen expansion foam. It probably just has some fiberglass insulation tucked in and it doesn't work, all right? You're gonna have nasty drafts all around your windows. It's not coming from the glass necessarily, it's just coming from behind the casing. Get those sealed up and then that film that works over the window will work incredibly well, all right? That's great for older houses. Now the last thing you're going to need, especially if you have old wooden windows, is you've got to do your caulking on the outside of the house. And the reason why you want to make sure you get this done now is because if it gets too cold, then you've got to spend a lot of money to buy exterior caulking. This stuff is only good to be installed, I think, down to about 5 degrees. Uh, if you're in the American scale, you're looking at somewhere in the low 50s. And then you've got to start upgrading your, your quality of caulking in order to deal with the weather. But a good cost-effective polyurethane caulking will seal anything, even below water lines, okay? So you don't have to worry about ice and snow and, 
and freeze-thaw situations. This stuff works in every environment. We use this product on Max's shed. We did a shed video and the thing still looks amazing and it's been a year and a half now. So this is how I know it works really well. Now, if you have windows that have bad caulking joints, you want to get those sealed up, okay? No ifs, ands, or buts. And I'm going to go a little demonstration here of how to seal it up. I just took a little bit of wood here and put it together because whenever you're caulking, you're dealing with a joint, right? Don't grab it and push it because that makes a heck of a mess, right? Now, I have told people before and I've warned them, this stuff is really difficult to work with. So when you're working with caulking, you want to be pulling it towards you, all right? And you want to be pretty much almost on a 90 degree angle and you want your tip cut on a 45. So what you're doing, putting just enough pressure so it fills the shape of the tube that has been cut over that angle, okay? If you go too fast, you're going to make a mess. So keep it slow and you can just keep an eye on the bead right in front of it. If it's squirting out just a bit, then you know you got good speed. You do not want to tool or use your finger on this stuff because it's incredibly nasty to work with. And real quick before we get on to some more interesting things in dealing with water management and all the other um, systems of the house, one more air draft issue you can address, especially in older homes, okay? There's a lot of air coming into the house around your outlet plates. And you can buy one of these little packages. And these are kind of fun because it's like punch outs, right? So if you have the old style receptacle, you can peel out just the part that goes around the old style receptacle. Okay. Or you can have the new modern decora, the square parts. <laughs> and you can just create that little, it's so adorable. It's kind of fun to work with. Now, you can also pull out the area where the set screw goes. Okay. There you go. So you take off your wall plate and then you put this over top your plug, all right? And you screw your wall plate back in. Those holes are where the wall plate gets screwed in, by the way, okay? Nice and simple. Even the middle of the old fashioned receptacle style, it has that little hole punch out for it. Now, this seems a little ridiculous. It's only a few bucks, but in the same way that we're dealing with sound and sound transmission, you want to stop the air from passing through. Trust me, older houses, a lot of those exterior wall cavities, especially on the old red brick, Right? They don't have any insulation on the wall. And so the wind is just blowing through there like crazy. Get yourself these silly little foam things and they will help change your life. Get rid of your drafts and you will not have to turn up the heat in order to survive the winter. Now the next thing that I'm going to recommend is all about water diversion. Okay, on the outside of the house. You have eavesdrops. And I've got this neat little gizmo here. Okay, and this is just a, uh, an extension for your downspout. All right. And they snap together. Okay, so. There we go. All right, and they're structural. They've got a little wedge in the middle. Okay, and so this goes outside, attaches to your downspout. Okay, lift it up to where it's engaged. You can even go online on Amazon. You can get extensions for these things. You can run them many, many feet from the house if you need. The point of this is, you can install this. And then you can backfill with gravel and dirt or stone or whatever is doing decorative in your house. And it looks like your eaves troughs and your downspouts go right underneath the ground. So we're going to go outside right now. I'm going to demonstrate because I got my pea gravel delivered. I'm going to show you how we're going to finish off our house. All right. This is how we're finishing off our house. Pea gravel. So my downspout is going to be covered in this stuff right here. And then Thanks, thanks to all this COVID mess, I'm actually getting my, my downspouts and my eavesdrop installed in the spring. But this is flexible, so they'll bring it to that area. They can connect it, throw in a couple of screws. This enables me to have a nice, pretty finish on there. And it's pretty unassuming, isn't it? And because it's emptying out on stone, it'll drain just fine. But then it's not ugly. And... You can stand on it and not damage it. Amazing. You gotta love it. So this gives me water diversion that's guaranteed to get away from the house. I'm never gonna get kicked off by accident because it's buried in the stone. Now before we deal with plumbing, yes, and it is a major issue every year, I'm gonna give some of the best advice so that you can avoid having a flood in your house 
we're going to talk about a couple other things. Insulation. We uh, just released our insulation video a few days ago. I want you to check it out. It's for blowing in insulation on your own. Okay, no. There's a machine that you get from the Home Depot. It's free if you buy a whole bunch of the stuff, but unless you're insulating your whole house, you probably are going to end up buying it. It's about a $100 rental, and then it's 60 bucks a bag. It's this stuff. Each one of these bags does about 100 square feet if you add another R20 on top of what's there now. Now, a lot of homes, especially older ones, have uh, just a little bit of loose fill, or they might have bad insulation, and bad insulation in an attic is bad insulation. Because <laughs> it doesn't fill the voids in the cavities, it doesn't trickle down where the roof line is, it leaves a lot of really cold spots, okay? So, watch that video, and you're going to learn all about how to do blown in insulation on your own, because it's relatively cheap and easy, and it can save you a ton of money on heating costs. All right, you might only need to top dress a little bit, but go out up in your attic, measure how thick your insulation is now, because over time as it settles, okay, you lose R value. It really has to do with the thickness that's left, not how much they started with. So a lot of the old fibers and fills and cellulose, humidity hits it in the summertime and it compresses and it compresses, and you're left with something instead of an R20 or an R30 that you thought you had, you might only have an R10, all right? And so you could be losing a ton of money by having all the heat in your house just lifting right through your attic. And if you live in the south and you're watching this video, this is a great idea for you too because this might help keep your house cool. All right, be sure to check. It's worth taking a quick peek up the ladder and have a check to see what your situation is. That stuff is money in the bank. Just before we get into the plumbing, there are other major systems in the house that you have to deal with. And I like to deal with it as a system, okay? It's time to turn off the water outside, okay? On the day that you pick to turn off the water to the hose bibs outside, you should do a bunch of different things. One, check all your fire detectors. If they're battery operated, change the batteries. Don't just check to see if they beep, okay? It's not worth it for you to leave a battery in there that's only gonna last for two months. Because <laughs> you're changing your, if you're checking it on October and then you get a Christmas day fire and your battery's dead, now that's the wrong time to find out you shouldn't have saved that four bucks. You go get yourself a new battery, change your batteries. Don't just test them, please. It's that simple. Go buy two of them, one for every detector that you need. <sighs> just, I want to harp on you, but those are kind of fire accidents are needless. Every year, there's always a story of somebody who suffers a tragic loss because they were too cheap to buy a battery. Right? Don't be that guy. Next. You have a furnace in your house. If you live in the wintertime, you have to turn off a hose bib because we only turn it off where it's cold. <laughs> if you live in Miami, you don't care. But for us up here, up the north, we got to turn this off and manage that water. You also are going to have something going on with the furnace, and that's your humidity, all right? You're going to have a, some kind of humidifier, in most cases, attached to a furnace. It's a little box. It's about this big. has a hose, flexible duct line, usually, that goes into the plenum. And so what happens is as the air is blowing through, you turn that on and you turn on the water supply to that and you have to move a valve in a lot of cases from summer to winter, okay? So go check it out. Make sure you're, you're, you're adding moisture to the air that you're adding into your house. If you're heating your house and you're not adding any humidity, all of your building materials like your crown moldings and your flooring, cabinets, everything will shrink that's made of wood, okay? Or MDF for that matter and you'll start getting gaps and cracks, and that's just a disaster because what happens is then dirt gets in all those gaps and cracks, and then the summer comes, everything swells again, but now there's dirt in the way, so then things start getting warped and messed up. So manage the humidity in your house and save yourself money long term. You should also have a little list in your drawer, okay, of all of the stuff that you do semi-annually, all right? There's always maintenance on every system in your house. Great day to go and check that out. Twice a year, you should do a walk of your property, check all your grading, check all of your roof, check all your eaves troughs, make sure they're cleaned out, make sure your shingles are in good shape, all that kind of stuff, right? If you just dedicate one day to all those different little systems, making sure everything's intact and everything's attached properly, there's nothing flapping around in the wind, then you can avoid disaster long-term. Now, let's get into this. Enough preaching, hose bibs. One of the most misunderstood pieces of plumbing in the entire house, okay? So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to discuss the basic system, how it should be installed, 
and the different things that can happen if they're installed improperly, okay, and what you can do to help avoid having a flood in your home. Now, this is a 12 inch hose bib. I think it's 12, yeah, 12, it says so right there. <laughs> All right, now, if you haven't seen this before, this represents the outside of the house, okay? It has two little slots there so you can screw it to something. In a lot of cases, these are installed on the rim joist and the plumber would have come along and drilled a hole big enough that this big nut fits through that hole. Okay, so it's usually like a one inch hole, one and a quarter. So that means the hole is bigger than the pipe. And then he throws a couple of screws in to hold it steady. Okay, now there's this washer here. Now if you see this washer, let's get this up close. Okay, um, close up on the washer. It's actually a wedge. It's skinnier at the bottom than it is at the top. When you install it, make sure it snaps in the right way, okay? So it's skinnier at the bottom than it is at the top. Because what this does is when you tighten these screws, it goes like, it goes like this. And you get a little bit of a degree, a one degree angle. That's what the wedge is for, okay? You screw it to your house and it should give you one degree angle. And this is why, in the wintertime, what we want to do with this faucet is we want to close this is already closed right you're going to go inside in your ceiling somewhere there's going to be a valve like this and it's going to be a shutoff valve every house that has a hose bib has a shutoff valve for each of these hose bibs it's usually a quarter turn and it's usually a ball valve like this these are rather expensive these valves don't have any gaskets they never wear out and they never leak when they're closed they're closed end of discussion no water gets through there. You close this, usually have a trap door on your ceiling, okay, or uh, some sort of access point. You close it, and then this bleeder valve, you open up and it drips, okay? What you do from the outside, you open up the handle, okay? And now that the pressure has been shut off inside the house, water that's in this, when it's installed right, will drain out of the faucet and leave this empty. Mm-hmm. When this cylinder is empty, you're safe. Okay? And here's why. Let's just show you how this works. Because a lot of people think that it turns the water off here. Here's the rod, and there's the gasket. It shuts the water off in here. Okay? This is the outside of the house. It's an inch and a half of wood. And then you've got this cavity, and it's supposed to be filled with insulation wrapped around that pipe, okay? R20 is standard. And then on the other side of the insulation, there's a vapor barrier, and the other side of that is where this connection and this shut shutoff valve are, okay? This valve is inside the heated, heated part of the house where there's plastic, and that part never freezes, okay? That's where the water is stopped. It stays warm all year round. Now inside this pipe here, it gets really, really cold. But this steel does not expand and blow up if it's empty. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to explain why everybody has floods in their basement. Somebody was installing this one. Ah, that's in the way. They screwed it flat. Okay. And they open this up and some of the water comes out, but some of it stays in the back because maybe they drilled the hole into the house on an angle and they went through two pieces of wood. If yours is installed like this, and you open this up and you let it drain, you're letting half of the water out, and you think, oh, I've done my job. Okay? I don't know, it's, it's kind of freaky. You actually want to go in your basement and grab this thing from the inside and see if it moves around. If it moves around, lift it up. Tighten it again from the outside, make sure it's got a slope. Okay? If it's like this, you have to have a valve that has the bleeder on it. Because now, this bleeder valve is on your side, okay? The water is stopped right here on the handle in the middle. This represents access to water that can be trapped in here, all right? So if you have water trapped in there, you can open this up and it'll leak out inside the house. Now you can just throw in a little container or something, catch the water. It's only a few ounces, okay? It's not going to create a flood. It's just whatever is being trapped in there that you can release on that valve. All right, now here's what happens. If you have 
your shutoff valve. And you ignore this in the wintertime and it's full of water, okay? Even if you close the handle, that's great. Okay, now it's closed. And so many people think, oh, I closed the handle, I'm good to go. But they're installed wrong. They got the wrong slope and it's holding water. And way back here somewhere where the water level is, there we go. That represents your water line. Okay, it's sitting right here. All of this is full of water. What happens in the wintertime is this pipe is not designed to expand and the water will. That water will freeze, okay, and become a solid block of ice. And then when it gets below minus five, it starts to grow. Yeah, water freezes and then it expands when it gets really cold. The colder the winter, the more that expands. And this will split open so fast it'll blow your mind. These pipes are not designed to resist the expansion of the ice, okay? They'll blow up. Now, where is that, where is that damage gonna happen? Where's my water line, right here? It's gonna happen back here somewhere, usually. Top or bottom, side, doesn't make a difference because this is the part that's in your wall cavity, right? Mm. So, if you're looking at this, as far as your wall assembly is concerned, Okay, here, I'm just gonna draw this out so maybe this will make a little bit more sense to people. Okay, here's your, here's your, your rim joist, all right? And then there's usually some concrete or whatever, right? And then here, we'll say there's a wall. Someone will frame a wall and this will all be insulation. But look where the blow up happens, right in the same spot as your insulation. And here's your outside frame, okay? So what ends up happening is all this water, you open this, you open this up as soon as the spring comes, and now you're opening up back here and all the your, your water is entering into the pipe for the first time in four to six months. It goes right out of that hole, straight inside the wall cavity in the insulation, and it's hidden in behind the wall. You don't see it until it fills up the wall cavity, soaks the floor. You're out there gardening and watering your plants and having a nice sunny day for the first time in months and this sucker blows up on you. And if no one's in the basement to realize it, it can be hours before you fix that situation because you're outside working, right? It's spring and this is what happens to people every year. They blow up because they were installed on an angle, all right? They don't have a bleeder valve and they think they're safe because they've got a frost-free pipe and they closed up before the winter. Don't be a victim. Make sure that yours is angled the right direction. And if it's in the wrong direction, change your valve where your shutoff is and put a bleeder on it, okay? That is a correct assembly. All right, whew. So if you're a new homeowner or a first time homeowner, or you've moved to a new region and you're not used to winter climates, that information is going to save your bacon, okay? Now, yes, this kind of accident, when it happens, most insurance companies cover the damage. But do you really wanna to have to make an insurance claim and go through all that hassle just because you don't have the right valve or you don't understand how the fossil works? I don't think so, all right? So listen, if that kind of information is helpful to you or you've learned a way to save a buck today, give us a thumbs up, all right? Subscribe to the channel if you haven't because we've got a lot of great videos coming. They're gonna help you not just maintain and fix your house and renovate it, but to make improvements that'll help make you a ton of money. Listen, if you wanna learn about how to make a ton of money, you can click this list over here. It's our bench series, okay? A lot of little videos like this one to help explain all the little ins and outs and nicks and crannies, systems and materials and tools that'll help make you a much better home renovator and a better homeowner. Cheers, well, we'll see you next time.